Hello, boys and girls. I'm Perla Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Tales of Wisdom. And this was supposed to be a McDonough trade video. We do trade videos here at the Perla Wisdom Show. And uh, so we, like, uh, for instance, we just did Huso and Campbell all at one time. Man, I'm still talking about that one in the chats right now. A lot of people have different opinions on that. We do unrestricted free agents like we did Forsberg, who looks like he might end up staying in Nashville after McDonough went there. I was just doing a video on where McDonough would go, and Nashville was my number one spot, and he went there, which really a little too early because I worked on it for quite a long time, and they made the trade. But that's all right. We're going to look at a different defenseman today. We're going to go revisit a defenseman that we looked at before the trade deadline, but it's still looking like it's he's available now. I've got a couple articles we're going to take a peek at to see what his value might be and what's the odds that he likely will be on his way. And that player is Chikrin from the Arizona Coyote. Now, if you're not sure, if you're not aware of who Mr. Chikrin is, he is a fantastic defenseman. Had a little bit of a, they said he struggled a bit last year. But Jacob Chikrin was uh, on a bad team. He was also hurting quite a bit for the first half. But he gutted it out and played it out until basically Arizona was completely out of it. And then he took some injury time out and came back. Now, his skills are insane. He's a beautiful skater. He's a big guy, really good offensively. Still could some, could use some work on the defensive side of things, but he's only 24 years old. And many experts and uh, even I've heard general managers have said that he will likely be in Norris Trophy uh, conversations in the future. So big, young. And here's the other thing. He's only at four, I, we're going to look at him here in a second, but he's only at like just over four million for the next couple of years in a cap world. So needless to say, Arizona is asking a lot. Arizona was asking a lot before the deadline, so much so that nobody bought. Now we're going into the off season. I don't know if his price is going to go down a little bit, but um, apparently as of now, the price is still very high. I think it will come down a little bit now, and we're going to look at some reasons why that might be. But sub yourself up, because this is the type of content we look at all the time. And uh, I'm going to have five teams, I think maybe even six. Actually, it's six teams that Chikrin may go to. There's a lot of teams going to be asking for him, but I think these are the six most likely places that he may go. And by the way, when I do these videos, they're fairly accurate. Usually we hit pretty good. Like, for instance, when we did Toffoli to Calgary, we got that one. Uh, Giroux, we had actually Carolina as number one, but Florida number two, and they ended up going there. So you get to get some pretty good insight on where team, where players may go, and we're usually, fair, like I said, fairly accurate. Let's take a look at some articles that happened that give us the indication that Chikrin will be moved on here. Okay. Jake, uh, Jacob Chikrin, when he was asked if he would be okay if he was traded in the summer, his answer was, I don't know. I'm signed for three more years. So, I mean, that's not the kind of thing that players that really want to be somewhere say. Usually when a player wants to be somewhere, they say, no, no, for sure, I love it here, I started here, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Does not say that to me. The, tra uh, the trajectory of where the team is going uh, and a lot of stuff is important to me. In other words, I want to win. That's basically what a player is saying when they say that most of the time. I want to be in a position where I'm getting to play a week from now and not packing up. And that's the other thing. Where's Arizona? Is Arizona going to even stay there? They're going in a little uh, arena right now that holds 5,000 people in a college. Are they going to get an arena? You know, Jacob Chikrin at this point, I believe, is looking at this going, do I want to go through another rebuild again at 24 where I'm not going to be relevant until I'm maybe 30? 
You know, I don't blame them a bit. And all so all of these things, are, you, you kind of got to read between the lines with these things. That's why I do them. And these actually are lines are pretty easy to read. Jacob Schifrin, at the very least, says he doesn't know. He's certainly not trumpeting the idea like, no, no, I'm going to be here for sure. And uh, for the most part, I think that uh, Arizona will oblige. All right. Now we had something that I was funny. I was just doing this and something came out on um, pro hockey rumors. By the way, I should say that I should give some props to the site here. They gave this Blades of Steel, a new site that I've been reading, actually. And I read them over for quite a long time. And I found that they have been fairly accurate in their news. So I thought I'd, sub, I'd, take, I'd shout them out a little bit and start using them. Blades of Steel. Pro Hockey Rumors says, uh, also talked about Chifrin. There, there hadn't been, uh, after being at the forefront of trade speculation most of last season, which we already talked about, Jacob Chifrin hasn't been mentioned much in trade talk as of late. Uh, at this point, it doesn't seem as if he'll he'll be on the move as GM said that there isn't much movement on the trade front where it comes to the 24-year-old. So his asking price was very high before the deadline. And they still are high. He's asking for three first-round picks or equivalent in assets or slightly more than that. Evidently, no one came with the big offer for him. Chikrin has three years left on his deal at 4.6. Amazing contract. Is coming off of a bit of a down year. Now, they say, okay, you're going to say, well, why are you doing this video then? Because there was an asking price. And they were offering him up to people. In other words, he still is available. Now, there is thoughts that maybe he would be best to come back and play really well in the beginning of the year. But if I'm a general manager, if you really believe in Chikrin, this is the time to do it. Um, they're obviously not going to take their ass down, but three equivalent first round picks, if you believe he's a first a Norris Trophy candidate coming up and you want a young guy on a cheap contract, that gives me every reason. Like, I don't blame Arizona for wanting a boatload for him. So anyways, we're going to take a look at some teams that would still take, would I believe will take a look at Chikrin. Just because they're not talking at the moment doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. I personally think that once the draft comes up and, and teams see who is available and what they may get at certain spots, there'll be some phone calls about Chikrin out there if their guy is already gone. Um, three, so we're going to look at it from each team, three picks, first round picks or, a, or something of that nature. So it could be a prospect, really good prospect and a first round pick, all of those sort of things like that. Okay. And we're going to start off with, okay, we'll look at what Arizona needs. Truth is they need everything. I mean, I imagine they'd like to get a defenseman back, but there is really not much of anything they don't need in Arizona. They definitely need centers, uh, right wingers, left wingers. Like they need everything that they can get. So let's take a look at the first team I have up. Now, okay, there's something else I wanted to mention. Sorry about Jake Chikrin. Let's look at Jake Chikrin himself. Uh, he's from Baton Rouge, Florida, right? And we're, we may look at that. Um, he's, he's, Born in Baton Rouge, but he uh, his nationality is Canadian. He lived in Canada as well, so he could do either. Um, he was the first overall. He's 24 years old. Now, this is the important thing to look at here, and this may be why it's difficult for Arizona to get the value that they want for Chikrin. Right now, he's he has... He doesn't have a no movement clause at all. Next year, his 10 team no trade list kicks in. So the first thing we want to say, we like to say is, oh, he can go anywhere right now. Yeah, but no. Just like what we saw with Fiala 
when you've got a couple years left to unrestricted free agents, your agents are going to be talking. He might as well have the 10 team no trade clause now because his agent is going to talk to anybody who wants to trade for him. And if he's going to, they're going to be on the 10 team no trade list, they're not going to trade for him. You see what I'm saying? So you might as well put it there. There's no reason. At, at, at the very least, you're not going to get, they're not going to give you the value you're looking for. Arizona is looking for for only one year of the fellow. Not to mention, it's not cool to take a guy that doesn't want to be there. It's just, it's not cool. So it's not likely that a team is going to do that. So you might as well have a 10 team no trade now. We don't know who those teams are. And the other part of it is after that, he, he, when he's 26 years old, He's a restricted free agent again, but he's one year from unrestricted free agency. And what's happening now is the players have all the power here. Just like Fiala when he went to L.A., I, I personally don't think, I think Minnesota didn't get full value for the talent that Fiala has. And uh, the reason why that was, though, is his agent goes around and talks to everybody as well. All the teams in Minnesota may want to trade to him, they're going to call his agent, and his agent's going to be like, "Yeah, he's probably they're probably he's probably not going to stay there long term. He's looking for eight million dollars a year, and there might have been only one, maybe two teams, maybe you know that were willing to give him eight million dollars a year, and that he was willing to sign long term for. It. In which case that decreases his value significantly, and that could happen here. So this is where asking for three first round picks." may not fly, but we're going to look at it anyway since that's what the ask is right now. The first place we're going to look at is the Winnipeg Jets. And the reason why we're looking at the Winnipeg Jets is, honestly, their defense has been their biggest issue so far. Paul Maurice is a very good coach, uh, and he did about as well as you can with the defense that they have here. Joshua Morrissey, He's not a number one defenseman, maybe a four. Dylan DeMello certainly isn't. Dylan Sandberg, we'll see what he becomes. Neil Pionk is actually probably their best defenseman. And then Brendan Dillon and Nate Schmidt. Nate Schmidt is way overvalued at $6 million a year. They're, it's just not a solid group of pe group here. So I think they'll be on the phone. For sure, I have them in the. I have them least likely, and the reason why that is is just what I talked about before. Chikrin will have a ten-team no trade. I don't know. I get. Um, he was from Canada for a bit. He was born in Florida. He's used to the warm weather. I'm not sure that you know, Winnipeg has a difficult time bringing people in there. It's not a sexy city. It's colder than heck in the winter. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a certain type of person that's going to be interested. But it's, if they can convince them, maybe say, hey, look, we will give you a long-term contract right now for $9 million a year or something like that. And that's kind of the thing that Winnipeg has to do. And he thinks it over and goes, okay, maybe I will do that. Now, what would the Jets have to give up? That's the question. We're talking about you know, three first round, he, okay, they got their first this year, which is, let's take a look here, I think it's right in the middle, 15th overall, I believe, yeah, 15th overall this year, uh, and they could give a young defenseman that they probably don't need anymore in his name is escapes me off the top of my head now. Dile Hinala, who was, I believe, a first round pick at one time. But he's 21. He's been right on the cusp of making it for a while now. And he could very well do it. Yeah, he was 20th overall in 2019. So that would be an equivalent. Another first-round pick. 
and uh, maybe Dominic Toninato, 28 years old. He's not really a first-round pick. He's a good speedster guy, something of that nature. Uh, I wonder if that would do it. I don't know. I would say that's not a bad deal. They're not going to give up Cole Perfetti in that deal. I don't think that they're going to give up Morgan Barron. They're very big on him. But I could see a deal, something like that, being palatable to Winnipeg. Uh, possibly another prospect as well. However, their prospect pool is a little thin, which is really too bad for... Oh, Chaz Lucius was a first-round pick. I think that's saying a, that's asking a lot. Um, but those, so a deal like that may be, be enough, I hope. I would hope. Uh, going by what I've heard they want at this moment, I don't think Arizona is going to give that. But if they start to bring their ass down, realizing that it's time to move on from Chikrin, something like that might work, assuming Chikrin will want to go there. All right, next, Florida. He's from Florida. Florida will be on the list. The question with Florida is, what are they going to give up for a guy like Chikrin? Now, they do need defensemen. Uh, the other problem with Florida is they do have some cap problems in, in, their, in their situation. Also the same sort of as in Winnipeg. But Winnipeg, I'm sure, would make room for their cap for a guy at $4.6 million that's willing to go there. They'd be jumping all over a guy like Chikrin. Florida definitely needs some help on defense, I believe. Um, Radko Gudis is solid, but he's not a fourth defenseman. He should be down there in the sixth spot. Chikrin would be able to go right beside Forsling. You have Ekblad Uyghur, Chikrin, Forsling, and who goes back? Well, you know, in this case, I don't think Arizona doesn't need to bring money back. They do need to hit the cap floor still. And I'm, I think a guy like Sam Bennett at 26 years old, who I doesn't have a no movement clause at all, who craves to be a number one center. That's for sure. Sam Bennett would love to be a number one center somewhere. And he could, all, he could pretty much be so in Arizona. I, I don't think he would be unhappy with the prospect of going there. He's 26. Arizona could sign him up to a longer contract. And again, they, they, now they have Anton Lundell, who at 20 is, looks like he's all ready to take the second line center spot. And they have plenty of players coming up that could take the center spot from that Lundell was in. Alexei Hepin and Yemi, he's been a young guy that's been up, been available. Uh, they could bring Joe Short, Joe Thornton back. So I think they could fill that center spot. Not to mention a lot of their wingers can play center, like Sam Reinhart. It could work. It could definitely work. Uh, I don't. That's not all you're going to have to give up, though. They said equivalent of three centers. I think or first rounders. I think Sam Bennett could could definitely be equivalent. That if you put him on the market, somebody would probably give up a a late first for him. Florida's first this year they do not have, which could propose a problem. In fact, they don't have it next year. So it would have to be like a second-round pick, maybe a young Denisenko. Sorry, Denisenko in, uh, was a first-round pick as well. And that would be, that would be uh, definitely a equivalent of us of a first round pick. Where the heck is Dennis Enko, by the way? Prospects. Minors. He would be in the minors. Or do they have him in the lineup now? Dennis Enko. Okay, they have him in the lineup now. There you go. Dennis Enko, a second round pick, and Mark and Barkoff. If they're not willing to take that, I think I I got to pass, not because I want to, but because you're really getting thin in your entire lineup to bring in a defenseman there. I don't know if that'll be enough, but here's the thing. Again, like I said, he will, he possibly will want to go home to Florida anyways. It might be his best destination. 
So all the other teams that might be talking, if they're really serious about trading him, he could say, look, you can take me, but I'm going to Florida when I'm a UFA. So simple as that. In which case, that's going to take the value huge. And if that's the case, they should pretty much take that trade from Florida. Okay, next, Vancouver. Okay, Vancouver for sure wants to do something with their defense. There's no doubt about that. They have, uh, it's porous, to put, to put it mildly. The problem again with Vancouver, the sad thing is they're not a very good team and they don't have much cap space all at the same time. That is not something that you want to have happen, to have no cap space and, and be a bad team at the same time. So how the heck would this happen now? I have, I, I think Vancouver will be very serious about this if they can. The problem is it's within the division. Uh, secondly, they're going to have to talk to the agent and say, hey, you know what, we can give you a significant role here in Vancouver. Pretty much can make you our first line right wing defenseman because he's, he's better than Tyler Myers already. And we'll give you a boatload of cash when you become a free agent. I think it's very possible he might say yes to something like this here because of the opportunity that he has. Like if he were to go to Florida, he may not get that top pairing money. I think he would probably take a Uyghur, but you never know. But here, he certainly would be able to do so. So what would they do? Now, my thought was this. The... Vancouver really doesn't have a lot to throw out there as far as prospects are concerned. But what they could do is offer up JT Miller for Florida to use on a three-way trade. There has been talk of the New York Rangers being interested still in JT Miller. There's been talk of Carolina being interested in JT Miller. And the ask seems to be something to the effect of a first round pick and two prospects for JT Miller. So without going into it and making this video even really longer, let's say you get let's say you go to the Rangers, they have uh like Jones on defense, who is a solid defenseman, looks like a solid defensive defenseman. Their first round pick in 2023, which will be very big for any team, and say Filipino, who maybe they don't need as much if they get a JT Miller there. Um, and then maybe another player to make the cap work, because that's going to be a problem for the Rangers as well. Now, so they could get those pros those kind of players, and Vancouver would give up their first this year with JT Miller. Then say the Rangers toss or or they, maybe they throw a second back or something like that to make it work. But they would get a ton of prospects in that deal. Uh, and uh, Vancouver would get possibly a Norris level. And I think they would also have to throw in like a first in Nils Hoglander and maybe a prospect as well to get Chikrin. I think that's pretty solid for Vancouver if that's what they give up. JT Miller, sorry, JT Miller, Hoglander in the first. There you go. And then they can trade JT Miller to say the Rangers get a package of prospects. That'll fill their ask. And Vancouver will get a fantastic defenseman and rebuild this defense that's desperately needing it. And uh, the Rangers would get JT Miller if that's what they're looking for. Apparently, they're looking for a, a more veteran second-line center. They've been talking about going for Dubois out of Winnipeg. Um, the question is, would they like to revisit JT Miller? I don't know. Like I said, lots of teams have been in on it. Philadelphia, Carolina, all of those. That's what I would think a three-way deal would work here to get Chikrin over to Vancouver. Now... If Arizona is one of those teams that are like, I don't want to make my, the people in my division stronger, I guess, but why do you care right now? You want to lose anyways. They're looking to be the worst in the league, so you might as well make it stronger. By the time you're good again, 
it's not going to matter. That's the way I look at it. I don't know if that's the way they look at it. Sub yourself up, Vancouver fans. Let me know how you think, what you think about a deal like that. Philadelphia Flyers are next. And this is really difficult because they have no cap space at all. But it is almost guaranteed, it seems, that James Van Riemsdyk is going to be moved on from either in a buyout or attaching a pick to him to send him somewhere. It seems very likely. And if they do that, they would have they are, they would have what's 12 million in cap space with some very not very significant players to sign. They could make it work that they could get a guy like Jacob Chikrin who's on a great deal right now. And he's only 24 years old. And he's a right defenseman and a stud defenseman at that. So where would he fit? He would fit. I mean, Ryan Ellis, I don't know, his injury issues and all that stuff like that. He would probably take the number one spot, but he's going to get tons of minutes. He would definitely take over Rasmus Ristolainen. He could play with Sanheim, which would be a very good combination. Now, what would Philadelphia have to give up for that? This is assuming that Philadelphia does make the room to do this. Um, they could, I would basically, if, I, if it's me, in fact, they could even give up a guy like Travis Konechny. I think Arizona will take money back here. So you could go Travis Konechny, give Owen Tippett full reign to become a second line winger in the NHL. And the, their, fifth, their fifth overall this year, Travis Konechny and their fifth overall this year, which is probably going to be a defenseman like Juracek or something like that, who probably will at maybe at most be as good as Chikrin, but you get Chikrin now. This is a team that kind of wants a rebuild. I don't know exactly what they're doing. They want to win now, but they want to get younger. You're doing one of those things. It'd be the perfect thing for that. Arizona would get the top five pick. They'd also get a guy like Travis Konechny, who is a heart and soul guy, can play. He's young. He's only 25 years old. If they're asking for any more than that, I don't know if I go. I would much go further than that. Um, you know, besides maybe a, you know, B level prospect or something like that. That's about all I would do. Tell me what you think, Philadelphia Flyers fans. Would you give up that much for a guy like Chikrin? Sub yourself up and tell me in the comment section if you haven't subbed up already. Next, Ottawa. Ottawa has already mentioned several times that they're looking for a top four defenseman and a top six winger. This is a team that wants to get good and get good now. They believe they've built up their prospect pool enough that they can start adding. I don't know if that's going to be the right answer or not, but that's what they seem to want to do. Chikrin is certainly that. And they don't have anybody to play with Shabbat. I like Artem Zub. Good player. Great player? No. Chikrin is a great player. And he could play with Thomas Shabbat or you could play with Eric Brandstrom. That being said, I just mentioned Zub. Zub could be in that deal. I would go Zub. You could go Zub. Pint, Shane Pinto. He's kind of buried there in Ottawa. He's a lot better than uh, a third line center, and he's probably not going to take Joshua Norris and Tim Stutzel out of there. So Pinto, Zub, and their first, their their seventh overall this year. I think that's something that would work. Now the question, of course, in here is, would he be willing to go to Ottawa? And you say, well, he he can get traded anywhere. He doesn't have a no trade list. Yes, that's true, but he does have one next year, and there's no use trading that much for him. If he's going to call up his agent and say, yeah, you were on my no trade list. You can trade for me, but I'm probably not going to stay there. If he was willing to, and I don't know if he would, that's the deal I would do. Next, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, they apparently were a team that were in on him early. They liked him right away. And I understand why. And this is another reason why I think my lean that he's going to become a very good defenseman is accurate because he is 
uh, sorry, Kekalainen's a genius and he's never wrong. Like he's never wrong about players. Who would they get in return on this? Okay, you got Nick Blankenberg who came in and played really, really well. Uh, he's a smaller defenseman, but he's a right defenseman. I think if you put him out there right now, Blankenberg would garner a late first from somebody. So that does solve the three first or equivalent for one of them. Alexander Tessier is a guy that they've been kind of looking like they're going to move away from. Probably after getting Borchek and Bjorkstrand, he's, seen, he's kind of buried. Um, I don't know. He can play all over the lineup. He can play center, left wing. I don't know what the falling out was there. Maybe it's the amount of money he wants on a contract. It's possible. That could be it. But Arizona, that would definitely be a first level of uh, 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 a number one, like somebody would give a late first for Alexander Tessie, I think. I think. He, he had 20 points in 36 games and 11 goals, and he's only 22 years old. There's a, there's a lot to like about that. And they're number six overall this year. Would they? That would be a first, or maybe their 12th. Maybe they could get away with their 12th this year. And I don't know if Arizona would go for that, but I think Columbus, if they want him, if they really love him as much as I think he's going to be, they may just give that up. Tell me what you think, Columbus Blue Jackets fans. Would you do something like that? And finally, the Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Kings, who just brought in a uh, brought in Fiala. And got him on a sweet, as far as assets are concerned, a sweet deal. I'm not sure about the $8 million for the next eight years, but uh, that um, the deal itself, they gave up very little. They still have tons of prospects to give up. And whenever I talk in the uh, chats about L.A., everybody's like, we need better defensemen, we need bigger defensemen. Chikrin's six foot one. He's a big guy. He plays tough. He plays hard. He's a great offensive guy. He could easily fit here and take Matt Roy's spot and move him down. Uh, but honestly, again, you're talking about an three first equivalent. They don't have their first this year. I got to think it's, I know you're going to hate this, but Sean Jersey and Chikrin is going to be better than Sean Jersey. I do believe that. He's going to be better than Sean Jersey. He's good. And I think Arizona would be happy to take him back. Take him. But I go Dursey. You got guys, centers that are buried in this lineup like Turcotte. Because once, uh, if you believe Byfield's going to be as good as he's going to be, Kopitar's going to be around for a while. Dano's going to be around for a while. Where does Turcotte fit here? I don't see it. You also have Gabriel Velarde. Velarde, Turcotte, and Dursey. Velarde does not, it doesn't look like they want, they're, they're kind of like lost it. They're, Velarde's not happy there. Uh, they haven't been giving him. He hasn't progressed very well in LA. So he's a bit of a risk. He's not really, he doesn't really get, he doesn't really have a high standing right now. So if it's basically a throw in with Jersey, but he was a first round pick. So he covers the first round pick idea. I think it would be, Something like that. Would you do it, LA fans? Would you give up that much for a guy like Chikrin? Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about that. All right. That was a lot. We got a lot done in one day. Um, that's my full 42. This was all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And uh, sub yourself up. Be part of the NHL Pearl, uh, NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. We do live, uh, I do live broadcasts on everything hockey on a regular basis. Got to be subbed up though, and uh, you can be part of it. That's my full 42. Tell me what you think in the comment section of all the, of the value of Jacob Chikrin. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.